Today, I'm going to show you four different types of memories that LangChain provides us to make it easy for us to build very powerful agents. Stick around till the end of this video because I'll explain to you exactly which memory you should use based on your use case. And also another reason to stick around till the end is that this is an important topic which will be used in all the upcoming LangChain agent projects on this channel. If you've seen the LM Agents Explainer video, which is part of the LM Concepts playlist on this channel, you know that agents work with a continued context and they have memory to store this context. And this is why today's video is important because we're going to look at the most important things that agents need, which is access to memory. Now LangChain gives you a lot of features to work with memory and there's a lot of customization possible. And this is what today's video is all about. Now the interesting thing to note here is that memory is what makes agents possible and not the other way around. So it's good to get a great grip on this topic before we jump to agents. By default, agents are stateless. So every time you pass a prompt to an agent, it treats it as a completely new prompt and works on it without any context. But memory allows an agent to remember previous interactions with the user. Apart from agents, there are many use cases where memory is important. For example, a chatbot which needs to have a complete history of the conversation you had with it previously. We will go over a code example now and I've created a Colab file for you so that you can run this code yourself without having to set up any environment. And the link for this is in the description of this video. Make sure you make a copy of this file so that you have it in your drive and you can access it later. Now all the examples that I'm about to show you are from the official LangChain docs. So they are accurate and they will run. By the way, today's video is part of the Gen AI and LLM projects playlist. Don't forget to check out other interesting projects in this playlist. Now, before we look at the code, I want to quickly tell you about the four different types of memories we're going to learn about today. So the first is conversation buffer memory. Second is conversation summary memory. Third is conversation buffer window memory. And the fourth is conversation knowledge graph memory. And instead of just explaining to you what these are and how they work, I'm actually going to show them to you. So let's get into our core example. We start by importing LangChain, of course, and then OpenAI because it's the easiest API to call. And because in this video, we want to focus on LangChain. So we need something that we have already seen before. Then we have TickToken that helps with counting tokens. You probably know about tokens if you've seen my LLM concepts playlist. An easy way to think about tokens is that it's the number of words that the LLM is going to generate. Now we want to count this to see how many tokens our LLM is generating for each query since we get charged based on the number of tokens generated. Then we import the inspect library in Python. We will be using it to check out the source code of a couple of chains that we'll import from LangChain just to see what happens inside. Then we import get pass, a secure way to get passwords and API keys. And I'm using it to set my open AI API key. Since this collab is public, I cannot leave my API key in there. Then we import two different chains, the LM chain and the conversation chain from LangChain. Now we have learned about chains in LangChain already in one of the previous videos in this playlist. In case you haven't seen it, think of chains as the building blocks with some awesome functionality already written for you. And these help you build LLM projects faster. Then we import the four different memories I told you about earlier, and I'll show you each of these one by one. Now, get OpenAI callback, which we're importing next, is a utility function that's going to help us in interacting with the OpenAI API, especially for logging and managing API usage and costs. Next line, we set the OpenAI API key using get pass and we create our LLM object in which we set our model to OpenAI, set the API key and the model name to GPT 3.5 Turbo, which is cheap yet effective. And since we are only testing this project out, we don't want to spend on GPT 4. Next, we are setting up our count tokens function, which takes in the chain and the query to be run by the LLM. In the function, we are using the get OpenAI callback to print the total number of tokens used by the LLM in answering the query. Now, before I show you the four memory types that I was talking about, let's take a quick detour and take a look under the hood of the two chains we had imported earlier, the conversation chain and the LLM chain, because we're going to use this with memory to help the user have a conversation with the LLM. So here we create our conversation chain using the LLM object and we print out the prompt template that's inside the conversation chain just to see how it works. And you see that the LangChain team has given it this prompt, which is the following is a friendly conversation between a human and an AI. The AI is talkative and provides lots of specific details from its context. If the API does not know the answer to a question, it truthfully says it does not know. Just this prompt itself reduces hallucination by a significant amount. But you notice something in the output. You have access to history, which is the previous interaction between the user and the LLM. Now, if you remember, we had imported the inspect function from the inspect library some time back, and this helps us output the source code for our conversation chain and our LLM chain. And you see in both the outputs that there's not much happening in the code, just a direct pass through an LLM. 
Now in the future, if you're ever curious and want to look under the hood of any of the LangChain functionalities, you know what to do. You just have to use inspect. All right, so let's talk about our first memory type, the conversation buffer memory. And as the name suggests, it keeps a buffer of the entire previous conversation with the user and sends it as the context in the prompt to the LLM. See, the interesting part here is that when we create our conversation chain, we set the memory to conversational buffer memory. This is where we'll be storing the previous conversations. So we pass it the first prompt, which is good morning AI in the output, and you get an object with the first field as input, which has our input and the history, which is empty, because this is the first instance of our interaction with the LLM and the LLM's response, which is good morning. It is a beautiful day today. How can I help you? So even though this output used up to 85 tokens, we don't see that in the output. So let's fix that. We call our count tokens function and send it the conversation buffer and our new prompt. Now, remember our count tokens function itself has the ability to run the chain which calls the LLM basically. So in the output, you get the response from the LLM. But most importantly, you get the total token count, but it says 179 tokens. And that seems like a lot for the response created. And that's because token count for LLMs include the number of tokens we are sending as input added to the number of tokens we're receiving as output. So since we are sending our conversation buffer, this means we are sending all the tokens from the previous conversations as the input. And until now, it's not that big of a problem, but let's run this a couple of times. We send another new prompt and this time, as you can see, the number of tokens generated is quite less, but still it says total 268 tokens used. In the next example, it says 360 tokens spent and the next one says 388, even though the input is just, what's my aim again? And the output is just one line. And to verify that in fact, the entire conversation is being recorded in our conversation buffer, we print it out and here you can see our entire interaction. Now this particular type of memory, which is the conversation buffer memory is the least used type of memory. And you can see why it's because we end up using so many tokens that it becomes impractical after a short chat. So only if you know the user is going to chat for a short period of time and you want that short chat to be extremely accurate, that's when you can use it. In all other instances, you might want to use the next type of memory, which is conversation summary memory. So in the conversation summary memory, instead of storing the entire conversation, we store just the summary of the previous conversation as history. And how do we summarize the conversation? Well, we use the LLM to do that. So it's a really smart way of reducing the number of tokens spent while interacting with the LLM. As you can see in the next cell, we create our conversation chain again, but this time in the memory, we pass conversation summary memory, and then we print its prompt template, which just gives an example to the LLM on how it should go ahead and create the summary for the previous conversation. If you remember from all the previous interactions we had with the LLM, we had reached 388 tokens. But here, the first interaction we have with the LLM, where we say, good morning, AI, we see in the output that 290 tokens were consumed, which includes this particular interaction as well. This means already the summarization has saved us quite a few tokens. Now we have a few more interactions and by the end we see that the total reaches 853 tokens, which you can see in the output of the last interaction and this seems like a big number. But in the next cell, we compare the length of our conversation buffer and our conversation summary buffer by printing both of them out. And here we see the exact difference. So our buffer memory is 334 and our summary memory is just 219. Not a huge difference, but it buys you many more conversations without hitting the context window, which in GPT 3.5 Turbo's case is 4096 tokens. So having a summary buffer is just a little better than having the conversation buffer. Now you will lose a bit of accuracy, but not too much. If you can sacrifice accuracy more and want to save even more tokens, then we should take a look at the next type of memory, which is conversation buffer window memory. This memory works in a very interesting manner. The conversation buffer window memory just keeps a few of the last interactions and drops the oldest ones, almost like a recently used cache. And because of this, the token count reduces drastically. So let's create our conversation chain again and pass the conversation buffer window memory in the memory field. And we will now have multiple interactions starting with the first interaction, which is 85 tokens, then 178 tokens, then 233 tokens, and then 245 tokens. And now if you see this jump from 233 tokens to 245 tokens, that's a very tiny jump considering the amount of tokens generated in the output of that query. And per query token generation is the least in this type of memory when compared with the two previous memories. Now check out our final interaction with the LLM using this memory. I ask it, what's my aim again? And check how in the output just 186 tokens have been spent and compare that to the previous one the conversation summary memory where more than 800 tokens were spent. What's happening is the memory buffer is just forgetting the old interactions and just keeping the latest interactions. And this gives the LLM enough context to reply. 
A thing to note here is that if you're building a very casual chat experience like an AI friend, this is the perfect type of memory to use because it's completely fine if the agent forgets a few details since the user is going to end up talking a lot with the agent in an AI friend scenario. However, if it's something more serious like an AI mental health professional, then this might not be the right memory as forgetting older conversations can lead to a serious loss of context and no matter how good the LLM is, accurate context is required for better answers. Now we print the contents of the window buffer and we see that we have only the most recent conversation in it. All the previous ones have been forgotten. And next, we print out the lengths of all the three buffers and compare them. The conversation buffer memory has a max length at 334. The conversation summary memory has 219 tokens and the buffer window memory has just 26 tokens. So now you have a good idea about which memory to use depending on your use case. Now let's look at the fourth memory type, which is the knowledge graph memory. And if you don't know what knowledge graphs are and how they work with respect to LMs, please don't worry. I have a really killer project coming up where I use Langchain along with Neo4j, a graph database. And we will dig into this topic in depth. But let me quickly explain to you what a knowledge graph is. Knowledge graphs basically enable us to compress a lot of information into highly significant snippets that can be fed into the model as context. And this is possible because a knowledge graph recognizes different entities and connects them in pairs with a resulting triplet with three entities, a subject, a predicate, and an object. In the Colab file, I've put the link to a blog post that explains knowledge graph memory from Langchain in case you want to understand this in more detail. But if you want to learn more about knowledge graphs, then there are many resources on the internet, including the upcoming project on my channel that uses Neo4j. Now let's see this particular memory type in action. We create our conversation chain and pass conversation kg memory, which is simply the knowledge graph memory, and we call our count tokens function by passing our kg memory and our prompt, which is, my name is human and I like mangoes. And the LM does produce an output. But what's important here is the output that we get when we print out the knowledge graph triples. So you see human human name and human mangoes like. This enables the knowledge graph to store the important information in a compressed format. If you've reached this far, it means you're really interested in AI and LLMs. So don't forget to join our Discord server where we discuss latest technologies. The link for the Discord server is in my YouTube profile. I also want to thank our sponsors for this video, which is you. Yes, you're the sponsor of this video and this channel is completely dependent on you sharing this content because I don't have any partnerships or sponsorships. And this is a really small channel with extremely technical and niche content, which doesn't really get served by YouTube. So make sure you share this with your friends and you like and comment on this video and subscribe to this channel. Thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for all that you've done for this channel. Now I'll see you in the next video.